listening to the Astral Hour. I'm your host, Astral Meadow. Join me as we take a glimpse into the mysterious. Welcome everyone. We have Charity and Eric Edwards here with us this evening. They are the creators of Knox Holistic, a Knoxville-based community of individuals who desire to transform their mind, body, and spirit. They offer hoop and yoga classes, holistic health coaching, as well as host ecstatic dances and provide various plant medicines for those looking for a natural alternative. Their passion is to serve the local community by offering a healthy atmosphere where each person is encouraged to reach their full potential. Welcome to the show, guys. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, Astral. It's, we're glad to be here. Thank you for yes, meeting us. This is truly an honor. So, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So first off, can you explain for us what holistic means and how it became a way of life for you all? Absolutely. So I'll take this one and then I'll let Eric kind of chime in a little bit. Um, So holistic, you know, most of us know holistic to be mind, body, and spirit. And so we believe that when we are treating the entire body, then we kind of line up with Mama Earth and we reach this beautiful state of homeostasis. So we will, you know, practice different practices that benefit our mind we will practice different things that benefit the body and then we also you know do things that are spiritual in nature um eric and i have various different kind of spiritual background a little bit um Mm -hmm. and we weren't really i guess jiving maybe with the with the religious maybe dogmatic community and so um you know i think we've just kind of figured out our own way of how do we kind of create this holistically healthy life, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what would you add to that? Well, I would say as far as the, the holistic part, you know, the mind, body, and spirit, uh, really looking at the connections between all of them. So, for instance, um, you know, the mind-body connection, um, you know, one of the things they talk about a lot is the placebo effect, you know, how you can take something and if you believe it's going to work uh, then it will work but they also have what's called the nocebo effect and that is you know if if you can make your body uh, well by thinking that something works you can also make your body sick by Mm -hmm. you know by the negative thoughts so Mm -hmm. the uh, holistic includes the connection of the mind body and spirit and uh, we also tend to like to do things as naturally as possible Mm -hmm. and you know, introduce as few chemicals as we can because the body is meant to function perfectly the way we're, the way we're born. Right. And as long as we get out of the way and get the poisons out of our body, we can be well and we don't need to be on a bunch of pharmaceuticals. Um, you know, there, there's, there are times where, you know, that can't be avoided, obviously. But uh, for the most part, you know, if we live well, eat well, and avoid the toxins, that's what holistic is all about. And mm-hmm. then you know, have the, uh, the spiritual side, uh, along with that, um, you really are, are a complete person, uh, you know, a whole person. Right. Yeah. And so I guess what maybe not everyone knows about, um, our journey, um, but I am, I guess, 10, 11 years cancer free. Oh, wow. And, uh, that was kind of part of our, our journey of, um, you know, just taking the, the steps, you know, to getting healthier. Mm-hmm. And we, we knew Eric being in Western medicine, um, having had that background and seeing a lot of what the cancer patients and how the cancer Mm. patients were being treated, um, he had decided that, you know, well, for we had decided, but, you Mm -hmm. know, Eric was like, you're not going to ever do chemo or radiation. We're not going to go that route. Mm -hmm. When I worked at the cancer hospital, I would see the patients run down the hallway and vomit in the trash cans and and lose all their hair. And, you know, Mm -hmm. they get sores in their mouth and that type of stuff. So we, when she got diagnosed, we started doing some research into Mm -hmm. how can we cure this naturally? And we came upon uh, Gerson therapy, you know, yes. Max Gerson. Uh, mm-hmm. He found the cure for cancer with, 
with diet and, and coffee enemas, which sounds kind of strange, but it's a very it's a very effective detox method. Uh huh. And so that's what we did. It's illegal and, to practice in the United States. I know. You have to go all the way to Mexico just to yeah. heal yourself. You it's, know it is really ridiculous because um, the controversial part of it is you're basically just juicing. Right, right. And you're drinking, you know, and you remove the pulp. So the type of juicer that they use is one that removes all the pulp and the idea behind that is that we are blasting the body with all of these nutrients and the vitamins that is so crucial for the healing Mm -hmm. um, of any sort of tumor and so you know if you're starving it out then you know Mm -hmm. you remove the cancer just naturally starts to shrink and go away the other part of it is that there are um, and this is you know a little bit controversial or just weird I guess Uh it's a little taboo but they they practice coffee enemas and so we had a nurse um i will leave her name anonymous but she is someone in our local community who is a gerson expert um and she taught me how to do it and um and so eric got on board and Mm -hmm. we basically kind of do things together and Mm -hmm. he would get up at 5 a.m and juice (laughs) a whole table full of fruits and vegetables i couldn't believe how much it took just to make like 32 ounces of juice it was a whole Uh, table full mm -hmm. you know and what that just was such Mm -hmm. love and i think his love and just all of it really part you know kind of took part in my healing Mm -hmm. Uh and we also um you know of course don't take any pharmaceuticals and so Mm -hmm. we used uh plant medicines and so you know part of my story and the truth that i'd like to share um is that I am a firm believer in cannabis and um, I will tell everybody I believe it's partly why I am cancer free Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. um, we are very grateful that our state of Tennessee has Mm -hmm. you know made CBD and also Delta 8 are now legal for us and uh, so we are you know very blessed in that way Mm -hmm. right yeah yeah So did you have anything else you wanted to add? Let's see. Well, um, you know, you had the, uh, of course, we had the cancer thing. Uh, The thing that really got me started into the very beginning of all of it was when I was uh, in in the year 2000. I had Mm -hmm. gotten 50 pounds overweight, and I was uh, in a a miserable relationship. I was in a house I couldn't afford, a job I hated. Mm -hmm. And um, I went on Prozac. for a while and it, it did it did get my mind straight enough that I quit my job broke mm-hmm. up with the wrong girl uh, you know uh, got on Weight Watchers sold the house uh, lost 50 pounds really got excited about diet and exercise and then I started geeking out on it so mm-hmm. for the next you know the next uh, 20 years I was studying it constantly it was kind of a, a hobby of mine so mm-hmm. um, yeah and running marathons we ran marathons (laughs) we ran half marathons uh, you know and just a whole different way of life and then uh seven years ago we quit drinking alcohol that's great that was one of the best decisions we ever made oh yeah it's a it's a game changer for Mm -hmm. sure we still like to party though right we we party smarter (laughs) yes Mm -hmm. that's a great thing yeah awesome All right. So is it challenging in the beginning for your clients to make this shift over to a more holistic lifestyle? Um, What are some words of encouragement you give them when they are moving through some of the challenging moments? Hmm. I'll answer. (laughs) Well, I usually just tell them that Rome was not built in a day. Right. (laughs) And it's taken them probably a lifetime of the habits that they have created And that, you know, it will take at least six months, you know, for them to kind of, you know, turn around some of those habits if they're, Mm -hmm. if they're ready to. So um, what we do as holistic health coaches is we work alongside an integrative medicine or functional medicine doctors. Um, Functional medicine doctors get to the root cause Mm -hmm. of what's going on with their patient And the integrative medicine doctors are trained in both Western and, you know, Eastern philosophies. They can write prescriptions, but it's sort of their last ditch effort. Right. They try everything else. And so we really will encourage our clients to go and look up these two types of doctors in their local area 
and then we kind of pick up where the doctor isn't able to. The doctor right. can't hold their hand for the next six months and, you know, show them different things that they can do. Um, and so that's really where we come in is that, you know, we, we have a six-month pro, um, approach that we take. And we were trained through Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Mm-hmm. And they taught us this amazing program. It's called the Circle of Life. And we share that with our clients and uh, over 12 sessions. And it changes their life. And our whole goal is really to not be needed um, mm-hmm. After that six months, we we want to send them on their way so that now they've learned how to become mm-hmm. their own healer. Exactly. That's what would you say? Well, yeah, I would uh, expand on that circle of life. You know, it uh, it ties back into the holistic thing. You know, mm-hmm. it's 12 areas of your life that are, you know, and they're called primary foods because they're really the most important. If you get those areas of your life balanced, it's very similar to Ayurvedic medicine. You know, they Mm -hmm. balance all the areas of your life and then the diet will just kind of follow. You know, and a really good example is if you're in a relationship where you're being abused, you're not going to come home and make a kale salad that's healthy right. for you. You're going to pull through the Dairy Queen and get a blizzard uh-huh. because you just want any kind of feel-good dopamine yes. hit because you're you're not getting it anywhere else. So, um, you know, if we can get the, you know, all parts of the life balanced, uh, then the, the diet kind of falls in place. Right. I always kind of look at it like for me, you know, that all of my illness or disease, it all starts on a spiritual level. So it's like it starts way up here and then it slowly integrates down into the mind. And once it gets into the mind and I start focusing on it, then that's when I start getting the symptoms. But it usually starts on this like very deep level that I'm not paying attention to until I notice it trickle down to the mind. And I'm almost trained to where I can catch it now and I'll start having the thoughts and I'm like, "Mm -mm, you're not doing this. But it Redirect. really does, it, it, it comes, it integrates down, but I almost feel like when you heal, you have to go in reverse. So you heal the physical body, you have to get to a certain point and then you get to the mind. And it, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I look at it too. Like the koshas that Philip talked about. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> I figure all these will somehow connect <laughs> to each other. You know? We might all know each other. You can we? tell we run in the same circle. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. A lot of times I've noticed when people start eating healthy foods in place of the processed ones, they go through some detox symptoms. Are there any herbs that can offer support through these? Absolutely. <laughs> right. Okay. Do you want me to go or sure, do you want to sure. chime in? Okay. We'll just go both together because I think we've kind of, we've, we kind of know what we're going to say. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so... As a part of our health coaching program, we teach a concept called bioindividuality. And so bioindividuality is what is one man's tonic might be another man's toxin. Mm -hmm. And so it's really hard to specifically give what is across the board um, great supplement herbs for, you know, detoxing. Mm -hmm. But what we might say across the board is definitely exercise right um and sweating as much as possible um Mm -hmm. look for the sweat lodges in your area um sit in your car when it's a blazing hot day and just allow the pores of your body to start to open up a little bit saunas are good saunas Mm -hmm. are great wet and dry depending on the times of year Mm -hmm. um and also of course drinking a ton of water so you know anything that you can do that flushes the system coconut water Water, get some electrolytes, yeah. mm-hmm. nat- natural electrolytes, not not Gatorade. Right. And just, you know, eating an anti-inflammatory diet. So, yes. you know, our big mm-hmm. thing is just reducing the inflammation in the body and also getting people to realize the, the connection between um, the gut and their health. Oh, yeah. You know, like we were taught, right? right. Hippocrates mm-hmm. says, you know, that all disease begins in the gut. So when we go in and we start to heal the gut and we get our microbiome, mm-hmm. um, you know, in a more balanced state, then lo and behold, if we don't start feeling good and, you know, and we can start to eliminate some of these medications right. and take back our health. That's one of the key points behind functional medicine is, you know, when, when you 
look at Western or allopathic medicine, you've got a different doctor for every part of the body. So mm-hmm. for psychology, they're looking at your brain, you know, for nephrology, you know, they're looking at your kidneys. But the way a functional medicine doctor looks at you as a whole right. and all of these uh, body parts are interacting as one. And so, you know, if you come in and you say you have depression, they're going to say, well, let's get to the root cause. You know, right. Let's not mask the symptom. Let's not give somebody a pill that's going to change their brain chemistry. Where Where is the cause coming from? You know, and, and probably 90% of the time, depression's starting in the gut. Uh-huh. You know, we have more serotonin produced. I think 80% of the serotonin in the body is produced in the gut, mm-hmm. uh, much less than the brain. They communicate back and forth. So if right. you have a ha- happy gut, you have a happy mind. And if you have an unhappy gut, you have an unhappy mind. So right. the functional mm-hmm. medicine doctors really get that, uh, whereas, um, you know, the, the, the Western allopathic, allopathic yeah. medicine mm-hmm. is really designed to... Uh, Name it, blame it, tame it, prescription pad medicine is what they call it. We have to credit Dr. Mark Hyman with that quote. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to give credit to our teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, our teachers are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Great. I've been blessed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I think of, you know, some of the harm in pharmaceuticals is like, so you're going to a heart doctor or something and he's treating the heart, but he's not focused on how that medication might affect the liver, you know, and so you, you're treating one organ, but at what cost? Mm-hmm. So then you, you fix you fix the heart problem, but now you've got this liver problem and then you start taking medicine for the liver and it's, you know, affecting the kidney. So now mm-hmm. you have a kidney thing. And so when you just treat one and you're not looking at the whole person, you end up causing, sure. you know, like dysfunction in some of the other mm-hmm. places, which means you need even more doctors, sure, you know, and sure. more treatments and over the counter mm-hmm. medication. Right. It all yeah, keeps all you dependent and, yeah. on pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, depression medicines that make uh, you gain weight. How's that going to do for your depression? Yeah. Right. Much yeah. of weight. Yeah. yeah. Now we got to get a whole new wardrobe of fat clothes. Yeah. Right. It's depressing. Yeah. Yes, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, what are some of the plant medicines that you all create and what are their benefits? Ooh, okay. Well, where do we begin? Um, so, well, let's start with CBD. Um, so we carry a specific line of CBD that's made by a company out of Asheville. We love to support local as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and she does a spagyric method of extracting the plant matter. And I don't really know anybody that uses this method, but it's spagyric, which is an old alchemical process where they, um, like burn the remaining ash and then, or they work the ash back into the plant um, into the tincture Mm -hmm. and so you're getting the entire thing and it's just it makes for a really nice potent uh, medicine so we have a line of cbd and then we also have um kratom and kava and so i'll tell you kind of why we we started stumbling upon some of these things when eric and i were considering going sober um, off of alcohol, I want to say, <laughs> right. you know, I guess the people, Sober's a relative people term. get yeah. all pissy. They're like, Oh, but didn't you say cannabis anyway? So, <laughs> but yeah, when we decided, you know, let's quit drinking alcohol. Um, we had a friend of ours who said, do you guys have any kava bars here? He was in town, you know, for in town. And he, he said, was from Florida. he was from Florida. And he said, do you guys have any kava bars? And we had no idea what he was talking about. And, and we were like, no. So I went home and did some research. And when we decided to quit drinking, I thought this might be a really wonderful like substitute for us because, you know, the, the issue with, you know, addiction or something I've recognized with addiction is that you don't really stop the addictive behavior. Right. But if you can substitute and have something that might be better for your body Mm -hmm. so that you're not in that acute like for instance with heroin um we've had clients that have come to us and they're weaning off of harder things like heroin or Mm -hmm. opiate addiction and what we will encourage them to do is to try a natural plant-based supplement such as kratom Mm -hmm. uh, which is excellent for for that sort of um withdrawals of those things and in kava is has been excellent for folks who need that substitute for alcohol when they just want to come home and relax and they can kind of go through the ritual of making kava which takes about seven minutes Mm -hmm. it's 
It's no big deal. It's very easy. Anybody can do it. Um, and, and so we, you know, we kind of provide these substitutes for folks. A part of what we did and the reason why we got passionate about this to begin with is that when we were the leaders of the flow arts community for 12, 13 years called Knox Flow, we were going to a lot of music festivals, me being a hoop dancer mm-hmm. and, um, and, a, and a big flow junkie. And we were going to these music festivals and I was noticing that these folks were very confident up with a lot of club drugs and a lot of really harsh things and of course they were alcoholics too I mean everything Uh went together and Eric and I played around in that community for quite a while Uh and we started seeing how it was making us toxic and a part of me wanting to you know I had cancer I mean I had to get clean was looking at all of those things and how we were using things recreationally mm-hmm. that were not supporting our health um, and how could we get back to, you know, to more natural. So in, in, in choosing some plant medicines that can provide a similar experience, but without all the negative side effects. Right. And so we thought also, you know, these folks were coming home from music festivals and they would go to the clubs Mm -hmm. and they are getting caught up, you know, in the, they, they kind of keep that addiction thing kind of going. And they, and so we thought, can we create a community for these folks, um, where they can get healthy and we can start to support, but yet still give them the club music and still give them the, yeah. yeah. Still dance and, and party and everything. Right. You know, the other thing that, um, really made, me in particular fall in love with kava is that not only was it a replacement for alcohol but i was able to completely replace my anxiety medication right so, it really does mellow yeah, me out too yeah so i had uh i have a, a you know adult onset anxiety disorder and mm-hmm. i was taking klonopin and i did not like the way it made me feel right and with the kava i was able to completely wean off of it so that's beautiful now at 50 you know 50 years old i'm completely pharmaceutical free right and that's the whole thing is you know you're not it's not like you're trying to tell people just throw all your pharmaceuticals in the trash it's a weaning you know maybe a little less of this while you add this in and so it's mm-hmm. you know it's working with them i guess that's the whole six month thing is like you're there to support them as they transition sure. yeah. to holistic you know <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, they have maybe a medication that they cannot go off right, of. Right. And, you know, obviously, uh, we would never recommend that. But, right. you know, what we do is we they usually come to us because they're curious right. if they could go off of something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're curious if there's maybe another tool or some techniques or something that they mm-hmm. could do with their health. And we will never tell them to go off yeah. of medication. Right. And we'll a lot get... of doctors will give them. They'll say, sure. hey, if you could change your diet, you, you could get off of this. Yeah, but ahead. then they need that support because the the doctor's not going to actually hold their hand through it they might Mm -hmm. suggest hey you know if you cut sugar then you know Mm -hmm. this would go down or whatever stop smoking Mm -hmm. right um but yeah you know the main thing to remember with allopathic doctors is that they had uh 19 hours (laughs) of nutrition training while they were in medical school Mm -hmm. so it is crucial for us to seek out you know our healers and to find those people that we resonate with and we like Maybe maybe they have something about their lifestyle that we we go, yeah, you know, I want that. You know, I want to be, like, healthy like that. Right. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, when my dad got diagnosed with cancer and was doing some of the treatments, um, I, like, bought this juicer for him. And, you know, I, was, I had done a lot of Gerson stuff because a lot of people in my family have died of cancer. And so I just had this, like, feeling of, like, I need to research this. So I didn't have cancer But I spent, you know, months, like, learning all these ways. There's more than just, like, the Gerson that, you know, that you've seen work. And um, so when he got the cancer, bought the juicer and the ninja and was talking about all this health stuff. And he's like, well, my doctor said that I can eat whatever I want. I just need to keep the weight on. So he was literally getting, like, packs of cookies. He would eat a whole pack of cookies. And he's like, well, I'm keeping the weight on. And I'm like... But it's just like, it's frustrating nice. that, that they wouldn't say, you know, it's important to keep the weight on, but it's also important to make sure you're meeting a certain amount of nutrition for the day. Absolutely. 
So here I am, like making, and he would drink the juice if I made it, you know. But he was just like, okay, this I'm only doing this because she's crazy and like wants me to, you know. Exactly, they just kind of appease us. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right. I know. Processed food feeds chronic yeah. disease. Oh I mean, yes. If you if you want to have chronic disease, just eat a lot of processed food. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, you're, you're sugar feeds cancer cells. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you won't exactly we won't get right. rid of it eating a bunch of cookies. You just exactly right. I know, I know. Well, you know, I would just tell dad, you know, that the uh, the guy had a mortgage payment to make, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And the, right. Uh, there's a, a limit to what they can even yeah. say. Like, I've seen people, okay, this is really taboo, but I'm, I follow this group and it's all about like you're in therapy or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. these people will go to their doctor yeah. and and he's like, what, what did you do? And they'll say, you're in therapy. And he's like, you know, I wish I could have told you that I've known about it. I'm not allowed to tell you oh, exactly. about this therapy. And yeah. so he could recognize when they were healing and he knows why it worked. But he Definitely. cannot tell them. Sure. You right. know, so oh, that's, yeah. I'm not saying go drink your pee. But right, exactly. I'm saying well, I've seen true. a yeah. lot of stories where it's, yeah. you know. Well, and it's like we come back to sort of that placebo effect. You know, I mm -hmm. really believe that, you know, the mind has got such a power, you know, powerful way of either healing the body or creating more illness. Right. And so I think that if you believe if something works, right. um, you know, then it will probably work. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. People kind of make fun of me for the homeopathy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I work with a professional homeopath and yeah. I don't care if it's placebo. All I know is the last time I got sick, I had a migraine come on and I messaged my homeopath and she told me a remedy. It was pretty quick when she messaged me back. I had a 10 minute headache. Yeah. I took the remedy. I did two doses and the headache was gone. So you can tell me that it's placebo, but I felt better. So I don't sure. care, you it know, matter. and yeah. the, the remedies are so inexpensive. Like you can get a huge like pack of them, you know, that's like for everything or whatever for 60 bucks. I've had this thing for years and I use one tiny pellet out of it, you know? Yeah. So people are like, you're just blowing your money. And I'm like, well, exactly. not really. When I think yeah. about one doctor visit, you mm -hmm. know, is going to cost me a hundred dollars yeah. or I can spend $60 and have enough of these remedies to last for years and they never expire, Exactly. you know, but I get, <laughs> it's hard, you know, when people just like completely make fun of you basically, but you're just well, like, whatever, man, like it works for me. <laughs> the proof is in the pudding, right. as, as my mama always said. And so, you know, I always just think that, you know, when you, when you look at someone's lifestyle, mm -hmm. I mean, are they doing well? Are they successful? Right. Are they happy? Are they healthy? Or, you know, are they doing well? I think the proof really isn't the pudding. Are they calling out of work sick you know, yeah. every right. other week? Are right. their kids always sick? Mm. Are they just always a bad news bear? You yeah. know, like it really is. It's self-fulfilling. Right. Time, so. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you brought up earlier that you do some hula hooping. Um, mm -hmm. I know that you really helped introduce the flow state to me. So I guess could you just sort of tell everybody like when you got into hooping and you know what flow means to you because I know it's a big part of your life so <clears throat> I just looked at the clock because I want to <laughs> make sure I don't go over right I know this um, is a big topic so uh my hula hoop has uh I've been hoop dancing I guess for 15 years and it has um longer than most people's marriages really <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's literally like I have married this weird round plastic um, circle prop <laughs> and mm -hmm. because when I was uh, I had also a stint with depression as well mm -hmm. and had been on uh, psych or not psychedelics not yet <laughs> anyway but um, when I was on pharmaceuticals for depression um, I you know, I just got kind of tired of how they were making me feel. Mm -hmm. I was very flat affect. And so I wanted to start looking for other ways that I could boost my own natural feel good dopamine, serotonin, and something where I didn't have to be dependent upon a pill. I didn't have to be dependent upon even if, whether the gym was open or not. It could just be my own thing that I could do by myself. I could take it you know, with me to the park, I could go in my backyard, I could do it in the basement in the wintertime. 
Um, I could go to, you know, a music festival or a concert uh, and just pick up a hoop mm-hmm. and sort of have this accidental exercise. Right. So the, the beginning of any practice, uh, typically you're there because there's some sort of an egoic drive to want to uh-huh. go there. You know, you right. want to lose weight. You want to... Um, I don't know. You want to look hot and sexy. You want your guy to be all like, oh, <laughs> she's so cute, you know? Right. And so there's like this sort of ego drive. And then then you start getting really good and people want you to perform. And then you're on stage and you're performing and you're teaching at different festivals. <laughs> and, you know, and so I kind of went through this whole kind of weird spiritual journey with my hoop. Mm-hmm. And, and but at the end of the day, the magic where the magic really started for me was when I started reaching flow state. Right. And, and then that's when it literally became that antidepressant, but like the natural antidepressant, you know, it was like, I could just pick up my hoop anytime I was having a bad day and work on a new move or, or just let myself sort of get lost and put some music on and just kind of do whatever I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I would have different kind of, um, uh, what would you call it? Like different themes for my workouts, like different, you know, practice themes. And, and then when you reach the flow state and you realize that with enough dedication to the practice, um, and, you you just reach this place and so when I teach it I will say you know we know flow as a verb we think of ourselves in flow the river in flow the traffic in flow Mm -hmm. so we're always thinking of it as a verb but really the idea of flow is that it is a noun it's a state it's a Mm -hmm. place that you're able to actually go to and tap into any time that you want to and it does feel like like a natural drug you yes. you just and you also I think it feels for me very um nurturing almost like I've come home to someone's arms um almost in in like Abraham Hicks talks about stepping into the vortex mm-hmm. and I literally feel like I step into a vortex um where God is and all of my troubles melts away Um, I feel connection to source. It's really magical. And so 15 years is nothing in comparison to what I want to be doing this practice for, you know, (laughs) because it's like, I can't, I don't have a choice now. Like I take the hoop practice is like the Prozac everyone else has to take. Right. Like I have to still be dedicated to it Uh and stick it out and not just give it up or not just do it because it's trendy or it made me look cute up on right. stage, but that it's way more than that. So, and my teacher that I want to give a lot of credit to is uh, Baxter um, of Hoop Path. Um, he changed my life and taught this as a spiritual tool for transformation. And um, his his style is very martial arts, mm-hmm. uh, flow. And he's my sensei, I guess you could say. And uh, so anyway, had to give him a little credit. Um, but then, yeah, so the flow state, it's a its a place. And we also uh, we want to credit the father of flow, which was Mihai Csikszent Mihai. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's a, a psychologist from Hungary. And he taught us about the flow state. He said that people who have the flow state tend to be happier in their lives. Mm -hmm. But there's so many different things that we can do to get the flow state. So I'll tell hoopers when they come to class, whether they stick out the hoop um, practice or not, um, what I want them to take away from the class is that they realize the importance of having flow in their life. Right. So that if they walk away and they want to go pick up a different prop or, you know, maybe explore the flow state in their yoga practice or right. whatever, can we just encourage them to realize the importance of having flow? Right. Yeah. Something that sort of gets you out of your head long enough to just... Yeah be in the moment you know and just really Mm -hmm. live and like you're not just like worried about tomorrow or yesterday you know you are just living like like a child you know like I think we need to come back to you know our inner child and let our inner child come out to play you know we take life so seriously Mm -hmm. we're so adults and we've got all these rules (laughs) you know and I think sometimes we need that place where we can just be silly and 
let your hoop drop and you know it's not all a performance <laughs> it's so easy to get shut down sh you know shut down your play side in our society because everybody is so driven you know to succeed and, uh -huh. and you know and we put so much work you know we put so much effort into our work mm -hmm. but very little effort into our play a lot of times right which is kind of the whole point in working is so that you can you know have the money or mm -hmm. the means to play but then we forget we get all mm -hmm. caught up in like this goal and like that's the thing about it is like when you're working towards something there's all this room you know, in between getting that, you know, and so you're so focused on the end that there's this whole gap of your life where, you know, you're exactly. just missing, you know, all this beauty and you're just, right. you're so focused yeah. on, well, I just want to get my degree in 10 years. And I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I try to get some people I know into these things and it's so hard, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, you need to just relax, yeah. like have a good time. Like you're still going to graduate, you mm -hmm. know, but you yeah. just want to make some time for yourself. And that's, you know, why a lot of people struggle is they're not, yeah. making space on the journey you know you can't just go 10 years you know right. cramming and studying and focusing on one thing like right. we are multi-dimensional beings you so know stress it's, right it causes a lot stress. of stress yes yeah, we sure. we did not even encourage our daughter to go the traditional route of four-year university right. um eric and i both have our experience you know we have our undergrad degrees and various different degrees that we got out we were like what are we even doing with this degree <laughs> nothing you know right. and then half the time we whatever job we could have landed with a degree mm -hmm. didn't make us any more than if we had just become entrepreneurs. Right. And so that's where, you know, my, my whole family is like entrepreneurs. So I was right. like, you know, I think it's time we've got to just mm -hmm. launch things and trust that the universe has a place for us. And right. It'll work out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And like, if yeah. you don't, if you are in college and you're just taking these classes and you don't actually know what you want to do with them, it, it really is kind of, a waste of time like maybe you should take a year off and figure out what you want and yes. then you're not gonna you know fail the like a class because you weren't passionate about it or right. something you know so when or I want to know that you're doing it for you and not right. just because mama and daddy mm -hmm. wanted you to get that major right you know, so that was us with Jade you know just I want her to be happy right period you know yeah not yeah. rack up a bunch of student debt to get right. a, a degree of undergraduate then, studies yeah you're in a hole the rest of your life mm -hmm. you know yeah I have an associates but I went to college and I didn't really care about like staying on a path. I took all the art classes. I did take, you know, Spanish and, yeah. you know, English 101 and all that. But like I, I ended up like taking every psychology class they had, even though it wasn't part of my major. And, right. you know, I was just like, oh, Intrigued. I'm going to take photography now. Yeah. So like I actually did utilize it, but I didn't go and get like a bachelor's in one thing. But, you know, I continued to make art even after Art, Good. you know, yeah. so I got like I mean, your just house enough. is full, it's so beautiful <laughs> here, yeah, yeah. So I yeah. kept it going. Um, all right, so I want to kind of go into a little bit of ecstatic dance, and yeah. and I want I would love to figure out how to word it or like invite people to where they don't just think, Oh, I hate dancing, or because I don't think that that's true. I don't yeah. think that people hate dancing, right? I think that they're like embarrassed or something, you know. Yeah, but true. I'm like, I have such a good time at these dances, you know. And we want everybody to know about it, <laughs> it's so awesome. Exactly. It's the perfect place for somebody who is nervous about what people think because I can honestly say, and this is coming from somebody who used to have to sit out in the parking lot and drink beers before right. I went in there because, you know, I was, I was Mr. I can't dance sober. I need to have a few beers in me. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I'll say about it that I've learned, we, I've been, how long we've been doing this now? Oh gosh. 15 years, something like that. Yeah. So, you know, over the years, what I've learned is that ecstatic dance is the one place where there's zero judgment mm -hmm. you will never have a person judge you in that room right. we have people that just roll on the floor we have people that just <laughs> walk around the perimeter right. and there was just... a girl that fell asleep the last time yeah <laughs> like exactly. it was like some electronic music and she just, just took a whatever nap you need. yeah whatever you need to right. you do whatever yoga you in the corner whatever exactly you want to do. So there's no judgment and that that takes all of the stress out of it and yeah. um you know once i saw that that's what it was like then you know 
didn't have to drink the beers to go in there. Right. You and you guys eat. offer the cavo before, and that, that really, really helps. Relaxes people. Definitely relax. The other thing uh-huh. you can do is you can, you know, we encourage people, you can wear a blindfold. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and at that point, you know, nobody's watching you. you right. Know? And you're not yeah. comparing yourself mm-hmm. to other people. Because exactly. I do subconsciously, like, I'm, I'm in my zone, and I might, like, look at somebody else dancing and I start like doing what they're doing and I'm not even trying to imitate them, but I end up like, Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That looks good. You mm-hmm. know? So I do, I'll, I'll close my eyes a lot because I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm not here to imitate. I'm here to move how I want to, yeah. you know? So I do think a blindfold would be good to sure. get people out of their head sure. and comparing very much. Mm-hmm. Well, let's tell them what ecstatic I'll tell dance them. is. Yeah, I'll oh, tell yeah. them a little bit about it. <laughs> so, yeah, what the heck is it? Um, and then I, you know, and I do want to say that when you go and you look up ecstatic dance in any town that you possibly could want to go to mm-hmm. or visit, um, you will have the same experience pretty much at most of them. This kind of the same general theme. They follow the same pattern. They kind of mm-hmm. follow the same pattern. So so what it is, is it's based on a philosophy by Gabrielle Roth, and she was the founder and creator of what's called the Five Rhythms. And she taught the Five Rhythms in New York City up until probably um, her death, I believe is in 2012. You guys will have to fact check me on that. <laughs> But anyway, she passed away, and but she changed so many people's lives when she was a teacher because she would say that when you set people in motion, they heal themselves. And so all she would simply do is just encourage folks, even if they were in a wheelchair, even if they, you know, were, you know, uh, handicapped in some way. Is that a word that we use anymore? I don't know. What's a PC word? Anymore? Handicapable. Handy capable, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like so, but you know, for folks that might have limitations in some way, she would give them, you know, just maybe some exercises that they could do and maybe exploring a little bit of a rhythm. So, no matter if they're sit- seated or if they're up, everybody can kind of explore these rhythms. And these five rhythms are the five sort of general rhythms that all humans kind of. Um, experience on any given day. And so what they are, the first one is flowing and flowing is a, it's kind of the feminine movement. So Mm -hmm. you want to think water, you know, so we think feminine, it's water, it's air, you know, it's very light. And so we, we kind of allow, um, our anxieties maybe start to come up when we're first starting out ecstatic dance, right? Because we're looking around the room, we're thinking everybody's watching me. <laughs> you know, I'm not really a good dancer. Uh-huh. I should just have stayed home and watched Netflix. <laughs> you know, so we are kind of going through a little bit of that and we kind of have to silence the monkey mind. Mm-hmm. We have to kind of silence and get all that out of the way. It's that inner critic that's trying to be a buzzkill. And then you hit staccato and mm-hmm. that's where we now introduce the masculine and we bring sort of that tribal beat and that's the beat where most people are like okay yeah now I got this because this (laughs) reminds me of the nightclubs right right so we introduce that beat um and it's very um you start to get really sweaty um she says that in this particular rhythm we might experience a little bit of anger maybe starts to come up right Uh and it's a healthy way for us to process these emotions that sort of get stuck in the body and so then we get to the third one which is the one most of us are kind of really there for it's kind of like the climax Uh you're because you're climbing a bell curve so when you hit the third one that's chaos and chaos is where the masculine the feminine come together they basically like crash into each other and it's just sort of out of control and it's this beautiful just release of anything that you know, you really need to let go of. Mm -hmm. And so typically in this rhythm, they say that you may experience uh, grief and sadness. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you might really just, you're, you're really letting everything go. And, and it's like what Philip was talking about, how, you know, Kundalini taps into that sort of emotional body. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then that's kind of how we like can transform, you know, because when you're holding a posture, and you're having to do that for 12 minutes. I mean, your mind's trying to tell you, get that F out of this, yes. right? <laughs> you know, and so it's the same way with chaos. It's mm-hmm. like if you can get to the peak of chaos and just almost throw yourself off the cliff, then you experience this amazing like state of ecstasy that gets released Mm -hmm. and that is what we are all there for it's It's a natural drug right it's it's like your your form of kundalini kundalini rising while you're at the dance yeah Yeah. and we're all like and you look around the room and everybody's just 
going to oh, town. That's so you know, fun. Really People are screaming. And, yeah. <laughs> and they're yeah. just like, we're all Shouting sweaty, out, you know. Making it's, animal it's so noises. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. the best. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> and then we come down to uh, lyrical. So lyrical is the fourth rhythm. And lyrical is where we find our childlike self. It's where you're feeling light. <laughs> it's kind of like the afterglow. It's clown lines. And, yeah, yes. it's very clown and very childlike. Circusy. And circusy. And we just kind of play and we skip around the room and um, some people get kind of giggly just because they're feeling kind of high for what just happened. Right. And then you come down to stillness, which is like Shavasana Mm -hmm. and Shavasana being corpse pose. And uh, that's your chance to just sort of integrate so that you can sort of, you know, kind of think back to the experience that you just had and what maybe you released and just kind of integrating and being like, wow, I feel so much better. I really let all that stuff go. Right. Yeah. And then we have sharing afterward where everybody gets to kind of share their yeah. experience. And mm-hmm. and we really like to just bring community together. And yeah. And our group just keeps growing. And they it's keep crazy. growing. <laughs> yeah. It really does feel like a community when I go and I might not, on, I might only see these people. Yeah once a month yeah but they you know they're smiling at me yeah. and they remember me and just being there you know during these moments with them so maybe they're feeling vulnerable or they're going through grief mm-hmm. or you know and they're sharing it it's just like you know it i don't know it's just a beautiful thing to really mm-hmm. see the depth of a person and not just these oh how you doing yeah. weather's great you know yeah. but like just to dance yeah. with them yeah. to sweat with You're them like them see your raw self mm-hmm. yeah and i love when i see couples that come together oh i love when like it's goes. date night yes. yeah yeah I'm like, oh, that's the best date night. Eric and I used to do that a lot for a date night. Uh And it really, we feel like it's brought our marriage closer together. Uh, We've been married now, how long? 17, 16 years, Mm -hmm. almost 17. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, I think dance, you know, each each couple usually has something that's kind of their glue. And our two big things have been dance and, Uh and hiking. Yeah, wow, yeah. You know, those are the two things we've done for our entire entire relationship. Yeah. And, you know, and that, plant medicine makes each other a little bit more tolerable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're in the hard moments. I, yeah. I, can, I can tolerate you when you're sleeping. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have all these silly jokes, so we're just always joking around. I know. I love you guys. I love doing exact dance. And when I do look up and see you guys, I'm just like, oh, you know. Like, <laughs> such a beautiful thing to share we always say we're the lucky ones yeah. and you all are the lucky ones too but we're <laughs> we're definitely we feel very lucky and you know that we found each other you know our soulmate um i've had plenty of twin flames uh, <laughs> oh, i finally God, found yeah. my soulmate <laughs> right yes that's a t- that's what we're really looking for. Yeah. So. And part of the holistic, you know, yeah. going back to that is uh-huh. relationships. Yeah. You know, that's right. one and of those primary foods that mm-hmm. we talked about, you know, so to kind of wrap that up, because I think there was one thing that maybe got left out and I want to, you know, state about our six month coaching program uh-huh. is that, you know, we focus on the primary foods. And once we get those areas balanced out, the secondary foods, which are the way that you feed yourself off of your play or uh, on your play, actually. You know, so the food that you're putting in the, you know, what you're consuming with your electronics, Mm -hmm. you know, what you're consuming as far as the liquids that you drink and the medications that you take, that stuff will sort of start to take care of itself once we balance out those 12 main areas. And so, yeah, so we look at each one and uh, we do some pretty difficult, you know, we also bring the chakras. I, we haven't right. talked about that, but you know, I was trained in, in that as well. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, that becomes a part of that emotional body, of, right. you know, where the body sort of holds on to trauma that happens. And, uh, most of us girls have, probably had some of that Mm -hmm. (laughs) i know i have and so yeah we learn how to you know release some of that stuff and Mm -hmm. and heal from it so it doesn't have to we don't have to be the victim anymore but the victors right yeah yeah Yeah, and you think about or i've noticed this as i'm healing and doing more movement that some of you know especially with a sag dance like like i'll move in a way and you know it's like i have trauma that was just stuck in a part of me like Like maybe it was like my knees or, you know, or like, it's like I have grief. Like when I get sad, the back of my knee hurts, you know, but as I'm dancing and, or even when I'm doing yoga, Mm -hmm. sometimes I'll get this release and it will, it'll like bring up this emotion or a memory. And I'm like, I finally 
got into it physically yeah you know because maybe i had adjusted it on a like a spiritual level but it was still somehow trapped and it took me moving yeah. to actually fully release it you know yeah. so where it was no longer it's like it's like mm-hmm. stuck on you like a parasite or something mm-hmm. like you have to consciously move it out you know oh, so. i remember a story about that i was in uh costa rica and uh we were in the middle of the rainforest. It was just a gorgeous morning for yoga. And our teacher instructed us to do our wide leg forward fold, but seated. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a seated wide leg forward fold. So I go to, and I used to not be able to go anywhere with this posture at all. I Mm -hmm. could just sit up and I was so tight in all these areas, even at yoga teacher training. And so she instructed us to start to walk our hands forward. And as soon as I did that, this pain shot literally from my growing all the way down through my mm. left leg. Uh-huh. And immediately I started bawling. Right. But I wasn't even feeling emotional before that. It was like, like you said, the trauma just went out. Right. And, you know, so I got up and I was like, okay, what just freaking happened to me? <laughs> and I go to in the bathroom and one of the yoga teachers came in and she was like, are you okay? And I explained to her and she goes, oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's perfectly normal. <laughs> right? That happens. And, and so now I instruct my own yoga students that way that you may have a, an emotional release. Right. And that's good. This is just safe space. Exactly. I the, yeah, I had that happen. I didn't even understand what was going on. It was towards the beginning of when I started doing yoga and we were doing hip openers and I just started crying and it wasn't like a thought went through my mind. I, you know, I wasn't uh, thinking about anything in particular and I just started bawling and it was, uh, it was strange to me because I didn't know that was even a thing. Right. Dude, our hips store so much of our stress. <laughs> my jaw and my hips, I feel they're on the same wavelength. And if one's tight, the other's tight. And if I can just take a moment and like kind of stretch my jaw and my hips yeah. out, I can, it, you know, I can yeah. relax. But it will, it'll like build up in those spaces if I don't stretch it out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So we talked a little bit about yoga. Is there like a branch that you guys focus on mm-hmm. or a type of yoga? Yeah, so I got brought into the yoga practice at the beginning uh, as more of a spiritual Mm -hmm. um, reading books and kind of becoming a yogi from a uh, knowledge. Right, in the the mind. It's the the philosophical aspect. That's how it worked for me, Me too. Me, too. And then I found the asanas. Uh Um, So we had kind of gone through a very difficult time probably about 2010 Mm -hmm. and so eric had introduced me to wayne dyer and then i was so inspired by wayne dyer we were we thought Mm -hmm. well who was wayne dyer's teachers so then we started learning from ram das oh yeah and then that we started learning about krishna das and then Uh it was like everything just started snowballing yeah there's a guru for every guru eckhart tolle deepak chopra we went down the hole timothy leary you know uh terence mckenna you know if anybody knows who he is Mm -hmm. um but yeah, so we had all of these different teachers that just started presenting themselves. And then I decided, you know, I think it's time for me to really, uh, to, you know, see about like really expanding this and becoming a yoga teacher. Mm-hmm. And so the, the idea was go to yoga teacher training. I needed some sort of uh, spiritual practice. You know, I had sort of left the Christian church. I mm-hmm. mean, Jesus will always still be my homeboy. Right. But um, I needed to walk away from the dogmatic part of the Christian church. The and man-made part. The man-made part. And so um, I, you know, Eric was like, well, if you never even teach a yoga class, this will still be worth every dollar that we spend, you know, for you to go right. to yoga teacher training. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. So I bit the bullet. I did an intensive program in Costa Rica uh, with Vidya High Soul. And shout out to Vidya in Spain. She is a beautiful, beautiful creature lady that I love. <laughs> um, and she's been teaching yoga for probably over 45, 50 years now. Um, and what that woman can do with her body even to this day is very impressive. Oh yeah. So anyway, so she was very, very inspiring. So I went to this yoga teacher training and uh, learned vinyasa. So vinyasa obviously was going to be my jam because mm-hmm. I'm a big flow junkie. Right. And I thought, now, which one will allow me to write my own creative sequencing? Right. So I, I am very inspired by Philip Clift. But, yeah. Uh, but we teach very differently. I'm, I'm definitely a flow. And so every right. class that you come to will 
will probably be a different experience. Mm -hmm. So, and I love music. I like to geek out on music. Um, And I also, because I really want to kind of get new folks who haven't gotten into yoga yet, I want to try to get them turned on to it. Right. So I try to make yoga just this really homey, relaxing Fun. experience um and i you might hear yeah. a cuss word in her class yeah <laughs> it might be a little rough around the edges right. sometimes and you know we talk about farting you know we just <laughs> and there might be a cat roaming right. around so you know it's very laid back i want people to feel like they can ask questions right. you know hey am i supposed to be feeling you know what's <laughs> happening you know so i want people to really feel like it's that you know, like we're just kind of in somebody's basement. We're doing right. yoga. and it's, it's not uptight. It's not uptight. Yeah, and that's definitely yeah. good for the beginner yes. people. Because I think, yeah. you know, I've taken a couple of my friends to, you know, some of the more expert yeah. level. And it's not like it's expert level, but there's experts there. And they're yeah. like, uh, you know. Well, so I feel like your class off. would be great, you it know, really for will someone. It folks off. I get a lot of folks that are like so extremely intimidated Right. That they won't even step foot in the door for their first class. Right. And so, like, if we can come back to the way that we're presenting these classes right. and how we're presenting, you know, even advertising about the classes so that everybody gets reached, you know. So that mm-hmm. was really my thing is I just want to make yoga kind of juicy and they're right. all going to love it. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. But, you know, I teach pranayama, teach uh, the chakras. I, I also do a, a series in the winter when we're all kind of doing our shadow work I like to think of the uh-huh. winter time as like a good time to you know get back to your roots and do a little bit of the shadow work so we do a seven week chakra series where we you know we kind of do a little bit of a deep dive um and but you know a light deep dive I guess you could say uh-huh. um really just an intro right you know and if they're curious they can dig in more but yeah I guess that's it so vinyasa and of course the pranayama is crucial especially yes. right now <laughs> oh yes we do we need to learn that there are ways that we can naturally you know regulate the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system meditation too. meditation oh, yeah. it's huge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it's definitely a life-changing thing once you get on it you know it's just because it works it works you, know? it you works. just have to give it a chance to do it you know you have to sit there you know for the five minutes that you're like I could never do it but just sit there anyways and then you'll look and you'll say okay it's in five minutes I did it and then you have the confidence but if you don't ever try it Mm -hmm. then it's never gonna work you know I love the quote I don't know if you remember who said it but I like this quote that says prayer is you speaking to God and meditation is God speaking to you right that's how you hear and listen you know and receive well because you know we all I love the Bible scripture that says be still and know that I am God and so sometimes I'll just use the short mantra of just be still and and so I'll tell you know beginning meditation practitioners you know that you can choose a technique like you might choose mantra you might choose mala you might choose breathing techniques but at the end of the day we want to try to get rid of having to need all the techniques the, and yeah, all the, the crutches. really stuff yeah. yeah and you know and just to sit still with yourself what did you remember that quote that Wayne Dyer used to quote all the time where he would say like one of man's greatest um tragedies is that he has the inability to sit alone with himself mm. it's that we are afraid of what we're going to see when right. we do that we feel we feel every moment of our lives with with some type of stimulus because right. we're so afraid you know of what will happen in the silence so we fill right. all this all the spaces you know with with a tv we'll have a tv going in the background right or, people sleep with it on yeah, you know yeah, so they wake like, up it's already mm-hmm. going like they never have to really yeah. sit and think you know and you know wayne dyer has a, a meditation that he does it's it's all about getting into the gap and so he talks about like getting into the gap in between your thoughts mm-hmm. you know so it's like that's where meditation kind of is like how right. do we kind of get into the gap and can we just kind of hang out there for a second right and it's especially helpful when you have kids i was uh-huh. a nanny <laughs> and i use these techniques a lot we use a lot of pratyahara <laughs> withdraw the <laughs> withdraw the senses 
places. Uh-huh. And sometimes you have to, you know, the kids are all going cray cray and you just have to really just get quiet. Filter it out. And filter it out. Well, kids yeah. really do kind of respond. If you, if yeah. you teach them about meditation, like They'll do what I you're have doing. a picture of Emerson. He was on the water slide and he had the water was like pouring down on him and he's just sitting at the top in Lotus with his, you know, thumb and finger <laughs> touching. And he's just letting the water pour on him with his eyes closed. And I'm like, I didn't even have to tell him to do that. But, you know, I have introduced that to him. So he's like, well, I'm going to try to, you know, get out of my mind while water's blasting on me. I like, wonder if I can do that. So I feel like if we could just give kids, you know, just the light instruction on these things that they do want to practice it. Like he, yeah. I, I don't have to tell him to meditate and I will look over. I swear so true. he does it on his own. Yes. You know, he's seen the benefit in it. Right. Well, right. you know, the old Bible scripture that says, if you train a child in the way they should go, when they get older, they won't fall from it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, is if you're a parent, then you know that sometimes it's like hitting your head against the wall to try to teach them something um, that you really want them to know, like, especially, you know, health related, like, right. we can't be eating pop tarts every day. guys. Right. You know? And, and so it's, it's difficult, but we definitely, I mean, if we can brag on ourselves a little bit, I think we've done a pretty good job raising our daughter, Jade. Uh, uh-huh. She is amazing. And she's now 22. But we literally just, we were, you know, teaching this stuff at home for so long. And now she's become a personal trainer. Um, she is in health and life coaching school right now. She's an entrepreneur and she is living um, by herself in Florida on the beach, <laughs> living her best life right. and, um, and literally just making great things happen. We are right. just, we're incredibly proud of her. She's gone mostly p- uh, plant-based. Mm-hmm. She's eaten a little bit of fish and some, I think, I think it's just fish. And so maybe, mm-hmm. I don't know if she does eggs. I don't know, but she's been, you know, on her own journey with her right. health as well. So we're just, we're super proud. And yeah. and it's interesting yeah. to see that, you know, even though during the time that we were trying to tell her all this stuff, you know, she wasn't having it. She was absorbing all exactly. of it. Exactly. And yes. she's looking at you guys and she's like, well, they're happy. They're healthy. You know, they, mm-hmm. you know, maybe when I get older, that's what I'll fall back on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We are. Yeah. She's super, super awesome. She's like, what 22 year old that, you know, that doesn't even want to drink alcohol. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's when, she like yeah. goes to Cava bars in Florida and they do trivia nights and different awesome. things there. She just loves it. Yeah. Great. Cool. All right. As we start to wrap up this episode, could you share the best way for our listeners to contact you and keep up with future events? Yes, absolutely. So we are, uh, we've just rebranded. So we've moved from our Knox Flow um, account and we've moved over to Knox Holistic. And our goal is really just to kind of encourage this holistic community where we come together sort of like a collaborative. Um, We want to know who the grass-fed beef folks are. We want to know who the raw milk folks are. We want to know who are organic farmers and growers Mm -hmm. Um, and and also, you know, folks who have different uh, life skills. And we want to start really bringing these people out of hiding Mm -hmm. (laughs) and to try to give them a voice like you're doing as well, but really give them a voice so that they are, their small, you know, grassroots businesses can also um, get out there. You know, we've got a guy that does microgreens. I mean, we are really right. growing this collective. So, you know, so our idea behind Knox Holistic is is that you know community empower and, each other empower you know? yeah. and we will refer constantly you know yes. in our health coaching we'll refer people to you know the guy that does the micro greens or the homeopath or mm-hmm. you know emdr i mean yeah. like just yeah. so many different folks that are mm-hmm. out there we've got a great lady who does acupuncture mm-hmm. and you know so it's good for us to know who are these holistic healers who are the good chiropractors in the mm-hmm. area that we recommend and um, so we've kind of got all, like, I need to create a directory. I think that's what yeah. <laughs> my next thing is <laughs> right. with all my free time. Um, so yes, yeah, so you'll find us at Instagram. Uh, okay. You will find us at Facebook and also on Telegram. So some folks are trying to wean off of um, 
mainstream social media. So if that's you and you're getting sick of old Zuckerberg, then uh, yeah, don't get me started. Um, yeah. Then yeah, just come over to Telegram. You will find our group over there. It's interactive. We share a lot of holistic health tips. Um, and we're a little more edgy on Telegram. Yeah, too. we're a little we, bit more. We edgy. talk about some things that <laughs> that might get us banned on Facebook. Or, <laughs> and uh, we have been banned. That's another thing that happened with Knox Flow that we want to make sure the community is aware of is that um, because we have been outspoken about natural health, as you can imagine, Mm -hmm. um, we have been greatly banned off of uh, Facebook, and they've limited what we were even able to do on the Knox Flow page. We couldn't invite new people. Oh, yeah. So they they were giving a warning. Mm -hmm. They were saying that we were uh, going against the community standards. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I I think most awake people are at this point. Um, And so we kind of had to rebrand. Like, you know, and this may not be our last (laughs) rebranding. We don't know what's going to happen. So, but yeah, we are on Telegram. I don't think we really have any. We're going to, we also have a channel on YouTube that we are going to get started. Okay. Um, We've already started talking about kind of doing something, not like what you're doing, but where we get together and share different things. Right. Um, Eric is a, a hunter and a fisherman and a gun expert. Uh, mm-hmm. So we want to help educate our clients about, you know, safe gun ownership and also ethical hunting. I'm also a chef. And you're yeah. a chef. Exactly. <laughs> he is the reason why I'm probably alive on this planet right now. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys yeah. so much for coming yeah, out for and being us. on the show. It's, it was a great it. episode. This I think a, a lot of pleasure. people. Thank you. Yes. I'm so excited to see where all this is going to go. I know it's getting, it's getting big on me. So, yeah. all right. So make sure to join us next Sunday on the Astral Hour. I'll talk to you soon.